You know, if you'd asked me years ago what kind of business I might eventually make it in someday, if I could write down 5,000 different business opportunities, the last one I'd ever write down is soap. It's the most unlikely way that I could ever mentally conceive of being free. And I'm 57 years old, and I've been free since I was 40 years old. I've been free for 17 years. I get up in the morning when I want to get up. I get up in the morning when I get up, want to get up. I go where I want to go. I do what I want to do. I do with who I want to do it with. And that's freedom. See, money's real big in our society today. I've noticed that ever since I was a kid. I had my first job at the age of 11. I carried news. Uh, well, I, I was a bag boy in an A&P store in Hampton Roads, Virginia at the age of 11. I was too young to even pay, so I, all I could make was tips for carrying, bagging groceries and taking to people's cars. I gave all that money to my mother because my father was an alcoholic. We never had enough money, and so that's why I got my job, so I could give it to my mother. Plus, I had a dream. I got it because I had a big dream. And my dream is real simple. My mother is still living. She's 75 today. And when she sits down at a piano, you just got to listen. I mean to tell you, she has got a touch with a piano that's indescribable. Anywhere she goes and she sits down and touches a keyboard, people have to stop and listen. Well, since she was having such a tough time with my father being, he being an alcoholic and unpredictable, I had a dream at 11 years old of my mother having her very own piano. That's right. I didn't know about dreams then, but I had one. I could just picture her happy playing that piano because I knew when she went to see my grandmother and grandfather or anybody, at any time she'd go with us a piano, she'd always be wind up playing that piano. And I, she always was smiling and happy because I, I could just picture her happy if she was playing the piano. And so I figured how to get her one. A gold Branson piano for $565. And all I had to do was figure what the monthly payments were. I was 11 years old. And my bag, grocery money, more than made the payments for three years to buy her that piano. That they went ahead and delivered anyway. She had to sign for it, but I made the payments when I was 11, 12, and 13 because I had a dream. I didn't want it for nothing. I had a dream. Dreams in America. And you can do anything you set your heart and mind to do if you only believe. Now, back then, I was told when I went to see about the piano that uh, you can't finance it, you're too young. Well, I didn't know how not to do anything at that time, so I figured my mother's old enough, so I got her to sign for it. There's always a way. If you have a dream... There's always a way to make them become a reality. You know? Well, one thing just leads to the other. And when I got into business, I had another dream. I think my dream was personal because I realized about money, you know? Because every time I turned around, somebody wanted some money. Every time he went to the mailbox, it's always these little envelopes with pictures little cellophane pictures you could see through in the front page, I mean, front of them, and you'd open them up and somebody would want some money. You know? Take your clothes to the cleaners. And somebody wanted some money. Go to get some gas in your car and the guy would come out and want some. Go to buy a car. They want some. Go to buy groceries. They want some. Go get a haircut. The guy wants some. Go to any, buy anything. Underwear. They want some. Go to church. They want some. You get politicians writing in the mail asking you for some. Every time you turn around, there's somebody wanting some. Your relative you haven't seen for four years calls you. They want some. You go see the doctor, he wants some. I don't care what you do. Somebody wants some. 
Your wife needs a shop. She says, I need some. She says, honey, I want a new fur coat. That cost money, money, money. And then people say, why'd you get in this business? I got in for five reasons. Money, 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 and money. Why does anybody get into business? Millions and millions and millions of people in this country in business to make. Now there's more to this business than money. And I know this, when you're in an honest business, you've got to get honest for it to work honestly. You've got to be good for your word. You've got to be sound and solid on some simple, basic principles or the concept of freedom will laugh right back at you. You've got to be somebody that someone wants to follow. What do I mean by that? Somebody that's, that doesn't know everything, that will admit it, and be willing to change when you're found to be wrong, and will set a pace, and make a lot of mistakes, honestly, by doing the best you can, and when you make a mistake, you apologize, you say, I'm wrong, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I'll do better next time. And then use that mistake as a stepping stone, not to do what? Not to do again, so you know what to do with more of your life as you move ahead with your life. That mistakes are the very foundation of success. That when we make a mistake, and it's an honest mistake, we ought to be excited about it because we have just learned something that we didn't know. That's why we made the mistake. Mistakes are not the end, they're the beginning. One reason people fail is because they're afraid to make mistakes. They're afraid to try. Afraid they'll fail. And they don't understand that's success. Fail. When you're doing your best. And you learn what not to do again. That doesn't work. So you spend more time doing what does work. The stepping stones to success are failure.